The Maya are an indigenous people of Mexico and Central America who have continuously inhabited the lands comprising modern-day Yucatan, Quintana Roo, Campeche, Tabasco, and Chiapas in Mexico and southward through Guatemala, Belize, El Salvador, and Honduras. The Cabash's scientific name is the Crescentia Crujete. It is a flowering tree about 10 meters in height. It is the national tree of Saint Lucia. The flowers are round and bell-shaped. The fruit is used to make containers, cups, etc. The young fruit is occasionally pickled but the pulp is poisonous. The fruit is used in the treatment of colds, diarrhea, pneumonia, and high cholesterol. It is also used for relief from menstrual pains and to ease childbirth and procure an abortion. The leaves can be used in the treatment of colds, lung diseases, toothache, wounds, and headaches. The bark is also used to clean wounds. In ancient times, the calabash was used in religious ceremonies. The bowls were used to hold offerings to the gods. These gifts for the gods are like prayers, as they have symbolic representation that includes fertility, prosperity, and strength. The calabash has been used for centuries to make cups and bowls for the kitchen. Today, these calabash bowls still grace the tables of Maya kitchens and are used to serve drinks and even the delicious, traditional caldo. In the video about to be shown, you will see the dancers holding decorated bowl-like objects. Those are the calabash. In this dance the calabash is used to hold offerings to the goddess, because the dance is portraying the preparing of the marriage between the sun god, Ak Kin and the moon goddess Ixchel. I hope you enjoy. Thank you. The ancient Maya, a diverse group of indigenous people who lived in parts of present-day Mexico, Belize, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, had one of the most sophisticated and complex civilizations in the Western Hemisphere. Between about 300 and 900 AD, the Maya were responsible for a number of remarkable scientific achievements in astronomy, agriculture, engineering, and communications. Recent discoveries had led many archaeologists and cultural anthropologists studying Maya history to conclude that the center of Mayan civilization was in fact Belize. The Ancient Maya Belize is a treasure trove of ancient Mayan temples, towns, and cities, only a few of which have been uncovered. The architecture of the Maya not only made use of the Corbel arc but certain temples were positioned so that precise observations of the equinox, solstice, and other astronomic events could be made by sighting planets and stars along the fine line positions on specific buildings. They also figured out how to grow corn, beans, squash, and cassava in sometimes inhospitable places, how to build elaborate cities without modern machinery, how to communicate with one another using one of the world's first written languages and how to measure time using not only one but two complicated calendar systems. Mayan Goddess Ishel Mayan medicine is holistic and takes place into consideration 
every aspect of health the physical the spiritual and even things we might consider outside influences such as nature Ishel, pronounced Ishel, was the Maya goddess of the moon, of love, of gestation, of medicine, and of the textile arts. Ishel was revered as the goddess of the moon because of her feminine character. She represented the fertility link to the earth due to the fact that the cycles of the moon are those which determine the times of planting and harvest. The Mayan herb, Jakas Bitter. Many Mayans prefer to try their herbal medicines before going to the hospital. The Latin name for this plant is Neuralina lobata. There are numerous common names including Mano de Lagarto, Res Puntas, and Anmanc. It is found everywhere in southern Belize in roadsides, fields, and pastures. They grow to about 3 meters tall and they are characterized by their alternate trilobe leaves. They have distinctive bright yellow flowers which grow in compact groups at the end of the branches and all parts of the plant are bitter tasting. In Belize, the use of this plant is mainly for skin conditions including sores, fungal and bacterial conditions. It is used for cold sores with good anecdotal evidence. Furthermore, it is used as a blood cleanser and is usually drunk in the form of a daily jackass bitters tea to cleanse and purify. As a general rule of thumb, bitter substances act by stimulating the gallbladder to contract and this may be the reason for its depurative reason. Gumbalimbo and Sena Alata in Maya Tradition by Celine Chan The Mayas of Belize reside mainly in rural Toledo and Cayo. Most of the individuals residing in these communities still uphold traditional beliefs and practices to this day. Thus, a large population of Mayas look to nature for a cure for their less severe ailments. Gumbo Limbo The Gumbo Limbo tree, scientifically known as Bucera simaruba, can reach heights of over 50 feet and possesses soft, lightweight wood. The trunk and branches are dense and coated with glossy, smooth, peeling copper-colored bark. With 7 to 11 leaflets, the leaves are pinnate and arranged into spirals. The Mayas make use of the gumbo limbo's medicinal properties by boiling the bark of the tree and adding it to baths or topically to cure sunburns, rashes, measles, insect bites, and it is also an antidote to the skin infection of the black poison wood. When boiled, the bark can, in addition, be ingested to relieve discomfort, cold, pneumonia, fever, and sunstroke. The tree's resins can also be used as a gout remedy. Senna alata. Senna alata is a deciduous shrub that can reach heights of over 30 inches in its natural habitat. The shrub produces medium to dark green compound leaves with 7 to 14 pairs of leaflets, along with bright yellow five-petaled cup-shaped flowers. Senna alata is a traditional medicine used by the Mayas as a laxative, antibacterial, anti-tumor, anti-inflammatory, diuretic, pain reliever, antifungal, hypoglycemic, and antispasmodic. When boiled and extracted, the leaves can act as laxatives, administered internally to cleanse the blood as a treatment for constipation. When its oils are extracted, it can be used topically as a remedy for skin blemishes, scabies, ringworms, and other fungal skin infections. Thank you for listening to my presentation. <laughs> The Garifun are descendants of shipwrecked slaves who intermarried with the Iraq Indians of the island of St. Vincent. Escaping persecution, they fled to the island of Rattan and then the rest of Central America. During the course of their dispersal along the coast of the adjacent mainland, 
by 1802, about 150 Garifunas were founded in Southern Belize. The arrival of the largest group of Garifunas was founded on 19 November in 1823, when the first settlement was founded in Degrega by those fleeting from this distances in Honduras. Today, the Garifuna people live mainly in small towns on the Caribbean coast from Belize to Nicaragua. Langrega in southern Belize is considered the spiritual capital of the Garifuna people, as it has the greatest concentration of them in Belize. Other Garifuna villages and towns in Belize include Hopkins, Punta Gorda, Livingston, Monkey River, Stain Blight, and Punta Negra. Of course, Garifuna people live throughout Belize, but these villages develop with their own unique culture that continues today throughout song, dance, food, and language. Food and dance, the cultural pattern of everyday life in terms of shelter and dress, confirms some of that of their closest akin, the Creole. The food style comprises mainly of fish cassava plantain prepared in various ways. Several dance styles include Punta Gorda, which makes the use of their drums and attributed to them. Along with the music, dance is one of the important parts of the Garifuna culture. One of the most well-known traditional Garifuna dances is the Jankuna dance, which is performed over the Christmas holidays. It is noteworthy that one of the symbols of the Garifuna is the arewa, which is intrinsically linked with the Eru plant, whose fruit is used in the preparation of cassava bread with the main staple of Garifuna diet. The Eru, which was included by the Garifuna during their passage to the Arutan, so that the story goes, and transplanted at their final destination, thus providing the necessary sustenance. Arrowroot. Some will remember the good old days of their mother or grandmother making arrowroot porridge, dumpling starch, and many other things from the arrowroot flour. Common names are Medina starch, obedience plant, and Bermuda arrowroot. It is usually processed into a powder, also called arrowroot flour. To extract the flour, the arrowroot is washed, cleaned, then washed again and fully dried. Next, it is beaten to a pulp and a milky white liquid is obtained when it is then passed through a coarse cloth to obtain the pure starch. This vegetable is mostly important into the kitchen as it works well in sweet and savory dishes alike. Every root is the choice when it comes to vegan and egg dishes because it makes a perfect binder. It is used in sauces, biscuits, jellies, cakes, puddings, fruit fried fillings and glazes as a thickening agent. It is also used as a replacement for cornstarch and as well as flour. It is, all, it is also used for shimmering fruit gels and the prevention of formation of ice crystals and homemade ice creams. Benefits of the arrowroot plant. It is gluten free, so it creates a higher demand for those who suffer from food allergies and chronic disease. It is a non irritating, nutritious diet for people with certain chronic diseases or for certain internal irritation, including bladder irritation. It is used for infant formula in replace of breast milk to help the baby after waning. People find it easily more digestible and it helps to keep things moving to help and help starve off hunger. Every root contains a good amount of potassium, iron, and B vitamins, which is great for metabolism, circulation, and heart health. Studies have shown that the arrowroot can stimulate immune cells and boost the immunity system. It is believed that the herb is an effective treatment for poison roots, including scorpion stings, snake bites, and spider bites. Fresh arrowroot juice mixed with water if drunk, it is said to be an antidote to vegetable poisoning.
थैंक यू एंड हैव अ गुड डे The mestizos use of the medicinal plant lemongrass. First off, who are the mestizo people? The mestizo people are people of mixed Spanish and Mayan descent, representing roughly 48% of the Belizean population. They are found everywhere in Belize, but mostly make their homes in the northern districts of Corozal and Orange Walk. In all areas, mestizo are Spanish speaking, and although many mestizo can speak English fluently, they prefer to communicate in their native Spanish language. Relationship to the lemongrass, the mestizo people extract the oils from the lemongrass and use it to treat digestive problems and high blood pressure. The oils are also used as a popular tool in aromatherapy to help relieve stress and as a natural remedy to heal wounds and help prevent infections such as skin infections, pneumonia, blood infections and serious intestinal infections. They also use the lemongrass as a tea to help with stomach aches, gastric ulcers, headaches and migraines so these are brief reasons why the mestizo uses lemongrass hi everyone today i'll share a story about how i found out about a plant that can ease headaches and help with many other illnesses let's begin Geranium is a native of South Africa, where more than 250 wild species of the plant still grow. They have been used for many years to treat a number of health conditions and help with certain bodily issues. Some of these include anxiety, depression, headaches, infections, lowering stress and inflammation. To reap the benefits of the geranium plant, boil the leaves and make it into a tea. It's that simple. Many of our own Belizean people use this herbal treatment as well, especially the Creole. Do you know how the geranium looks? Here's a picture. Next time you feel a headache coming on, try it and see for yourself. With all that said, I hope you learned something new today. Thank you for watching. My name is Katrina Aguilar and today I'll be talking about Contribo. I'll talk about its medicinal properties and its cultural uses. So it is a popular remedy for indigestion, stomach ache, cold and flus. When you infuse it in water and consume it, it gives your body immense power to fight off the colds and flus. Its properties are a lot more effective than most famous bush medicines. So its cultural uses in the Creole culture. The Creole people normally soak it in water or they grind it or they, again, soak it in water. When they soak it in the water, they use it to flush out their immune system of impurities, and they sometimes use it as a lotion to treat wounds and skin, skin infections. When they grind it, they add it into their food, <clears throat> and this is used to increase appetite. And that is all I have for you today. 
Thank you. Long ago, accepted by the rest of the population, the East Indians presently make up about 3% of Belize's population. Men and women of the East Indian culture are typically draped and wrapped according to tradition, history, and location as a form of their clothing style. Their cuisines, however, vary significantly from each other and use locally available ingredients such as herbs, vegetables, and fruits. In addition, their healthcare traditions are vital to their culture. It includes the use of natural herbs such as some fruits and materials from their respective trees. This has been one of the main attractions of the East Indian culture. A very special fruit, the sourzap, also known as a nona miracata, is one of the main fruits used as a form of herbal medicine. The tree is relatively indigenous to South and Central America and bears shiny oval leaves and green aromatic fruits. The medicinal uses of soursop includes that it is high in antioxidants, which prevents cell damage and lowers risk of chronic disease. It also helps kill cancer cells, helps fight bacteria, boosts the body immune system, improves gastrointestinal health, stabilizes blood sugar levels and also the soursop leaf treats gout, smooths back pain, relieves stress, treats insomnia and deals with depression. Some of the leaves on the tree are often harvested, placed in a pot of water, both for a couple minutes in order to make soursop tea. Besides having medicinal purposes, the fruit itself can be used to make different delicacies such as soursop popsicle, which is freeze and served frozen, and also soursop shake, which is blended with milk and other ingredients to provide a smooth texture. Belize is known as a melting pot of cultures. These cultures use medicinal plants in different ways. We will be discussing how garlic and the periwinkle is used in Asian culture. In this video, Asian refers to those of Chinese, Japanese, and Korean descent. Garlic, Allium sativum. In ancient Chinese medicine, garlic was prescribed to aid respiration and digestion, most importantly, diarrhea and worm infestation. Evidence also suggests that garlic was utilized to treat sadness or depression as well. Fatigue, headache, and insomnia were often treated with garlic too. There are also indications that garlic was used to treat and improve male potency. It is believed that garlic was introduced in Japanese later than it was in China. In most recent years, garlic is in wide use in China as part of their daily diet, particularly when consumed together with raw meat. Records dating from 2,000 years ago suggest that garlic was used as a food preservative. In Central Asia, garlic is part of the culture of civilization found mostly in dishes like garlic noodles and Japanese spicy shrimp. Korean folklore even has an origin story that involves a tiger and a bear praying to a supreme divine region that they might become human. The deity responds in part by giving each animal 20 cloves of garlic. Next, the periwinkle, Caranthus roseus. The periwinkle is famously known for its hand in cancer treatment, improved brain function, and good circulation. In tea, the Chinese have used the periwinkle as a medicine to treat diabetes, where it is effectively used as a substitute for insulin. The flower is also a symbol of spiritual peace and harmony. Placing the leaves in the mattress of a couple is said to bring them peace, faithfulness, and love forever. The 17th century herbalist said, the leaves eaten together by man and wife cause love between them. This is Miguel Lee, and thank you for the patience to watch through my low-budget film. If you ever want a higher quality of video making, then please sponsor me through this number, 501-638-5648. If you ever feel like you want to meet me in person, you will have to pay extra. Thank you very much. May you have a wonderful day and God bless you. China, one of the world's biggest.
and most inhabited nations on the planet Earth is considered to be home for many and a great traveling spot for others. It is a nation that is filled with beautiful scenery, majestic history, surprising culinary, and masters of karate. But that's not what I will be talking about. What I will be talking about is Sorcy. Sorcy, one of Belize's most renowned medicinal plants. However, Sorcy is not just limited to Belize. The notoriety of Sorcy spreads across the globe worldwide for its bitter taste, hence the nickname Bitter Melon. Now, despite the bitter taste of Sorcy, the Chinese have incorporated it into their dishes. A traditional dish is called stuffed sorosi, where the Chinese cut sorosi into pieces and they clean out the inside, then place minced meat, and they either steam it or boil it till it's cooked, ready to serve. Another traditional Chinese dish is called the sorosi salad, where the Chinese pick fresh sorosi and cut it into slices and stir fry them till it comes to life. Now. Why would the Chinese incorporate sorosi into their dishes despite its extreme bitter taste? Well, it all comes down to one word: healthiness. Sorosi is highly nutritious. It contains twice the beta carotene of broccoli, twice the potassium of bananas, twice the calcium of spinach, and it consists of high fiber and high amounts of vitamins and iron. Now, sorosi is comprised of thousands of phytochemicals. And has been used to treat wide variety of health problems such as constipation, diabetes, hypertension, or high cholesterol. Now, the Chinese have also created a drink called Sorosi drink. Not only is it a great nutritional drink, it is also used to cool down the body during summer while it, the temperature is beyond overwhelming. Now, as the Chinese say, drink one cup of Sorosi a day benefits your pockets in every way. This is my video on the Sorosi uses for Chinese culture. I hope you have had a great day, and I hope you will continue to have a great day. Many races and people hear them calling to you. Varied cultures, but colorful. They feel the warmth of each smiling face. People in harmony. Aloe vera contains antioxidants, enzymes, and vitamins A and C, and it is highly anti-inflammatory. It can help treat burnt acne and dry skin. Aloe vera works best on superficial surface acne rather than cystic or deeper acne. Consuming aloe vera can help in your digestive health, as it will benefit your digestive tract and help to soothe and cure stomach ailments such as irritable bowel syndrome. It also helps your oral health as using it as a toothpaste and mouthwash are natural options for improving your oral hygiene and reducing plaque.